In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Big supper, everybody. Good morning. May God bless you all and bless your life and be with you. May God bless all of us and bless uh, everybody of you, especially that today we are celebrating Joseph, the husband of Mary, Revelation, and when the angel came to him in the dream, he told him that the baby who is with Mary is conceived by the Holy Spirit and he should call his name Jesus because he will save his people and actually word Jesus or Yeshua it means God is saved and also he said his name will be Emmanuel which is translated God with us so I ask our Heavenly Father to be with you and to open our hearts so we can accept him, all of us, as Joseph did, and he became our savior because this is his name. So if we want to really to become Christian, to become a true followers of Jesus, number one, we have to accept him because his name is God saving. So we should accept him in order to save us and to be our savior and our God. But when we talk about revelation of Joseph, actually we talk about a righteous man. And this man, actually the Bible does not talk about him a lot. And not only that, surprisingly, Joseph did not say any single word or the Bible or the Gospel did not record any single word to Joseph. Joseph did not talk anything as the Bible telling us. But at the same time, Joseph, he played very important role in the journey or in the life of Jesus Christ. So I will talk a little bit about Joseph and how the Bible described him. Actually, number one thing the Bible said that Joseph, he was a just and righteous man. Come. Yeah, she wanna share with me the sermon. <laughs> so the Bible said that Joseph, he was a righteous man. Actually, this sermon I try to direct it especially to the man. Because Joseph is a man, and we can see from his character how important person was, and not only that, what did this person do in order to be worthy to raise up Jesus when he came to this earth. So number one thing the Bible said about Joseph, that he was a just man or righteous man. Because after he found that Mary, she was a pregnant at the third month, after she came back from uh, her relative Elizabeth, so the pregnancy began to show on Mary. So this man, who is Joseph, he began to see this change in Mary's life and he knows according to the law of Moses if he will say that this baby is not from me they will stone Mary till death but the Bible say being a just and a righteous man and not wanting to make her a public example was minded to put her away secretly number one thing I think every single man should uh, have is to be righteous person. What does righteous it mean? Righteous it means blameless, without any blame. A lot of wives, especially as priests, they came to me for confession. 
a lot of a broken family. I'm not blaming the man, by the way, but today I'm talking about the man, so that's why I'm directing or I'm pointing on the man. So don't take it personally, please. So righteous, it means blameless, without any blame. That means you are pure heart. And not only pure heart, that always fear of God would be in your heart in any action you do in your life. Dealing with your wife, number one, with your kids, with your family, with your neighbor, with people that you work with, you should always have fear of God in your heart in order to be able to please God. Like Joseph, he could easily say that this baby is not from me and he would not lie. But he was thinking what God wanted him to do, not he as a human he should do. This is what it means righteous. Always ask God what he should do or what he should direct you or counsel you in your life in order to be with all people with peace and love. Number two, the Bible said that Joseph, he did exactly as the angel of the Lord commanded him. And here we can see how Joseph was obedient. Are you really obedient to God's commandment in your life? Do you follow what the Bible says as a man and as a woman also? Do you follow what God put in your heart in order to worship Him and to deal with your family? The Bible says He did as the angel of the Lord commanded Him. So He followed the commandment of the commandments of the Lord. The question, as a man, do we really follow the commandments of God or we all follow what our mind what I feel it's right for me, what I should do to be happy, not what God actually asking me to do and to follow in my life. And number three, the Bible said that when he saw this change in Mary's life, he didn't behave in anger. He was very calm and he was praying and he was asking God what he should do to solve this problem. A lot of times, especially among the families, when somebody makes a mistake, I'm talking about the husband and the wife, before you get angry, ask what God wants you to do to face this problem or this misunderstanding as a family that you face. And instead, you depend on your own wisdom, try to ask God so he will give you the divine wisdom so whenever or whatever you will do you will do it in fear of god like joseph exactly again he could easily say, say that this baby is not from me but he didn't behave in anger way he didn't have a wrath he was very patient and very calm and he ran away to god asking him lord what should I do with this little girl? So are you as a husband and wife, when you have a problem, you run to God asking him, how should he direct you or lead you in order to solve your problem? Or each one, he tried to blame the other part in order to say that I am not wrong. Joseph, he was a very good example a role models for a very righteous and very just man to solve the problem in his family. Do you actually follow the same thing? And number four, the Bible said that when the angel told, told him, right away he took Mary to his actually house. So here we can see how responsible Joseph was. A lot of husbands, again, please don't take it personally, husbands, I love you all. A lot of husbands, they try to throw their responsibilities on their wives. And they say, we do a lot, we work. I remember one time, a couple, they had a problem. They came to me, 
So I was talking with both of them. The man, he was so angry. And he was asking his wife. He said, ask her, Abuna, did I miss anything? I do a lot of things. I work very hard. Not for them I do all this. I actually was looking to the wife what she would answer. She said, yes, Abuna, but I don't only want the money. The money is very important for me. For me. But I want him to take responsibility with me, raising the kids, taking care of the home, and all the social activity or anything with the family. I want him. I like to have him with me. As example, she said, he worked on Sunday. When I go to the church, I go by myself. She said, I got tired to go to the church with myself. I love to go like all the families. Husbands and wife and the kids, all of us, we go and worship God and pray together. I think Joseph, he was the perfect example for the man. When he heard the commandment of God from the angel, he took this responsibility very well. And he raised up Jesus and he took care of Mary. I think as a Christian family, as a Christian community, do we really, as a man, we are a righteous people, which means we have a fear of God in our heart, dealing, dealing with our uh, family, with our relative? Do we really obey God to guide us in this life? Do we really follow what God say and actually be in obedience to His commandment and at the end? Do we really take our responsibility seriously or I throw everything on him or on her? I ask our Heavenly Father to open our heart and to know that the family is not 50-50. A lot of couples, they came to me when I do counseling to the couples we call to pre cana or Christian counseling before the marriage. They came to me excited, happy. They say, Abuna, I'm going to do 50% of what I have to do as a husband or as a wife. And they are very happy and they agree on that, not knowing that the Bible does not tell us to only play 50% of your role, but you have to do 100%. And she also has to do the same thing. Because when the couples get married, they become one body. There is no 50-50. There is perfect 100% from him and 100% from her. And then they can have this Christian family where the kids will grow up in fear of God. And also they will be good uh, follower to Christ. We have to understand something very important. Joseph, again, did not say any single word. This is what the Bible records for us. But at the same time, because of his righteousness, he was able to be the physical father of Jesus Christ. Because of his, his faith, he received the blessing and he received big honor among all the men maybe of the earth. A lot of us, we do other way around. We tell us, we tell God this statement. God, do something to me and I will have strong faith in you. Unlike Joseph, he was walking in fear of God and in faith and because of his faith, he received the blessing. So I encourage everybody, and especially the men, please walk in the fear of God. Be righteous person to your family, just person. Be obedient to God's commandment. Take your responsibility right and correctly, and do all that in faith, and you will see miracle in your family. Don't blame others. Don't think that some person else, a lot of people, by the way, even they blame the church. 
Why the church do, does not do anything enough for our kids? You have to take this responsibility. Because you only come to the church how many hours during the week? Two, three, four? What about the rest of the week? But if you are a righteous person, you will receive a blessing in your family. Then the whole church will be blessed and the whole church will be the real body of Christ and the whole church will be one day responsible to share the good news with everybody around the world. I ask our Heavenly Father that all of us, we live in faith, we live in modesty, we live the life of righteousness, and we will see the blessing in our family. I encourage all of you, and especially the men, to meditate in Joseph's life, to see how righteous person he was, and because of that, he was able to be very important figure in the story of salvation. Of course, before the Christmas, we talk about Mary, we talk about John the Baptist, we talk about all the events that happened before Jesus' birth. But we don't give this man actually enough time. So that's why today I want to talk about him and encourage you, the man especially, to take him as a patron, as a role example, role model for your life. He was very calm, but he had very strong faith. He did not do anything, but he listened to God. He did not actually behave any way wrong, but he was actually very obedient to God, and he took his responsibility right. I encourage all the men to ask Saint Joseph to bless their life and above everything. I ask our Heavenly Father by the Holy Spirit to open our heart and to review ourselves as a man, especially again, so we can be a righteous husband, so we can be blessing to this family and in order to worship as a family, all of us, God together. May God bless you all. Bashmudabu, Udabru, Wadruhayu Kadishu, Hadalohu Shariru. Amin.